And let's take a look at how to import a KMZ file. I simply open the uh, file menu like you would in many, many programs. And here in my Caribbean survey class, we've got four KMZ files. We want the four maps Jamaica. And we click it open. And if you look down here in the Caribbean, we'll see the, the maps appear. And so that's how to import a KMZ file. Not very difficult at all. So now I want to take a look at these imported maps that we just brought in, how to turn them on and off, and how to change the transparency of the maps. We've actually got four here. They turn off and on very easily just by clicking the little checkbox, and we can turn them all on simultaneously. Though it's much more useful just to have one of the maps on so we can take a look at that and then compare it. Uh, how do we change the transparency level? You can see these are partially transparent. You simply right click on the item that you want to change, go down to properties, and this in fact is what you would do to change any one of a number of elements in Google Earth. When the little properties dialog comes up, we're going to see that you can move a transparency slider here from clear all the way to opaque. And so you can either look at the map in great detail or you can make it more transparent to see the satellite images underneath. You can also get in here and change a number of the other attributes, and we'll be doing this, in fact, with other with the, with the place marks in Google Earth. But from, um, for the maps, the changing the transparency is probably the most important thing. Then when you move out of that and close that dialog box, the changes that you made are, are, are saved in the file. Now let's take a look at working with place marks in Google Earth. So I already have a place mark here. I'm going to turn the maps off. For Cape Town, South Africa, one of the most extraordinary places geographically and culturally speaking on the planet. And uh, here we're zooming in on Cape Town, South Africa. And as you can see, we've got a very particular perspective. Because when I saved, uh, when I made this particular place mark, I deliberately chose to save this particular view of the city and the spectacular uh, table mountain behind it. So uh, if we wanted to change that, we could go into properties. And here we've got the descriptive area where we could type the text describing the view. We can, as you can see, we can change the, uh, the actual marker that's been used for the place mark. We can change the color of that marker and its size. This is probably the most important thing. Once you find the view that you want, click Snapshot Current View and that will be saved. And you could also change the altitude if you want. But the real key uh, thing here is snapshot current view and then OK. And uh, then it's saved. So let's just uh, go to Dallas using Google Earth. We'll fly back to the American Hemisphere and in there into the city. This, of course, is the standard view coming in at a 90 degree angle to the surface of the planet. But we want something a lot more interesting, maybe like what we had in Cape Town, so I'm going to zoom in, kind of pivot up so we can get some of the 3D buildings that are accessible in Dallas. And then I'm going to click the place mark button up here, that little push tack, and we'll call it Dallas. Uh, the assignment asks you when you make a place mark to type in a longer description. Uh, that's described in the assignment sheet. And we're going to choose view, and we're going to say snapshot current view. And it's going to save this particular location. Whoops, there come the 3D buildings. And now it's, now it's saved. So we can zoom out here and get an image of Dallas. And then we want to go back in from that particular place. We can zoom it right in there. And there are the, right in the middle of the urban canyons of the city. Well, we're almost done here. We just have two more steps. You may want to come back to the screen in a couple of seconds to review these various steps, but we'll go over to Google Earth and, and, and follow them. I'd like you to make a file, a folder, by right-clicking on temporary places, clicking Add and then Folder. And I'd like you to give that folder your name, let's say your last name, and then the number of the assignment that it is. We'll say Jones1. And then down here in the description, you give your full name, assignment one for, let's just say this is history 2302, and click OK. So there's that folder there, and then take the place marks that you've been making, you may have a dozen of them or, or more for some of these assignments, and click them down directly on top of that folder. Right click, right click directly on that new folder, 
and instead of clicking on Add, go down here to Save Place As. And that's going to make the KMZ file, as you can see. So just let Google Earth call it by, by your last name, which is the name of the folder, and click Save. And there we go. The steps are all listed for you there. And there's just one final step, which is to send me the KMZ file. Now, I'd like you, to, at the end of this presentation, to go to the next webcast link, which will give you a short uh, guide, less than six minutes, on how to upload your KMZ file, or really any file you have to send me, to UTA's Mavspace service. So you'll upload the file to Mavspace, and then you will send me in an email the Mavspace address of the file that you uploaded. And the next presentation explains all those steps. So I hope this, you had some fun with this and play around with Google Earth. If you can't get anything to work right the first time, try it again. And if you're getting really frustrated, give me a call. I'll be happy to help.